the telecom industry is always under pressure to adapt to this, this fast changing market. What are the key areas of new tech development and what are the monetization opportunities for 2023? Now, today we have Ishwar Parulkar. He is the chief technologist, telecom and edge cloud at AWS. And he's on our show to share the latest trends for 2023. Welcome, Ishwar. Happy to be here, Ronald. Yeah, as mentioned, the, the telecom industry is changing super fast. Now, what are the top digital transformation priorities that you see? And what are areas that telecom service providers should focus on in 2023? So, uh, you know, at AWS, we've been working with uh, telecoms for the past few years, but we really believe that 2023 is going to be an inflection point and we're going to see acceleration in some areas and some new uh, focuses, uh, focus areas pop up. Uh, for one, data is going to be central to transforming uh, telecoms. Uh, telcos have a lot of data today, uh, but it's in silos sitting in different organizations, different systems. And there's a lot of potential in really harnessing this data to not only uh, improve operations, network operations, but also really change the customer experience and build new business models. So we'll see uh, a fair bit of that happening with uh, third party cookies depreciating first party data becomes super important and obviously this has to be done with customers best interests but that's going to be another change in how uh, telcos will start to look at monetizing data and then uh, you know kind of modernizing the data infrastructure using the cloud so that they can harness that data so that's number one uh, the second area where we are we would see a, a real big focus in 2023 is sustainability uh, if you look at various research reports, they peg the consumption uh, of uh, uh, energy of telcos pretty high. Uh, the carbon dioxide emissions of telcos are approximately 3 to 4%, which is twice that of the aviation industry, which is heavily scrutinized in this space. If you look at the cost of operations uh, attributed to energy consumption, uh, it's anywhere between 15 to 40 percent, uh, you know, according to various research reports. So it is a big problem for them. And energy with energy prices rising, uh, it becomes even more critical. Here also, the cloud is a big uh, uh, enabler. Uh, just moving to the cloud itself is a big advantage because cloud is large scale, multi-tenanted. So it has very high utilization. And Research 451 has uh, shown that uh, just moving to the cloud uh, improves uh, carbon footprint by 80%. And at AWS, we are focused on renew renewable energy. So by 2025, we expect to be 100% carbon neutral. Uh, with that, this uh, carbon footprint from 80% goes to a 90% improvement uh, if you move from on-prem to the cloud. So just by moving to the cloud itself, telcos can benefit from it. Uh, but we're also looking at uh, in-house innovation, like using Graviton processors, which are ARM-based processors, and extremely power efficient. Uh, and we are, we are seeing uh, improvement in telco workloads, 5G packet core, uh, of up to 70% in using these processors as opposed to x86 processors. And NEC uh, and NTT Docomo in Japan just proved that uh, using AWS. So that was uh, the second transformation I see, which is sustainability becoming very focused and cloud being an enabler. The third one is around really monetizing 5G. Uh, 5G networks are now becoming mature. If you look at what has happened uh, un until now, uh, primarily in the last year is all top tier telcos in the US and now have 5G networks. 34 of the 50 countries in Europe now have 5G networks and 14 in Asia Pacific. So now there's a entrenched footprint of 5G. We'll see the next level of really adopting 5G and uh, unleashing the uh, power of 5G, which it was intended to be very dynamic networks, being able to build uh, uh, new services in a very agile manner, personalizing the services based on customers and so forth. So essentially what we call network as a platform, you know, we'll, we'll see more of that happening. Another aspect to the 5G is the private networks. Uh, you know, IDC research has pegged the market at around 8.6 8 billion by 2026. Now, admittedly, the adoption has been slow because of various challenges. It's, uh, you know, kind of, it's still a little complex to set them up. So you need uh, an experience that's very managed and easy to implement, which is what we've been focused on on AWS. Uh, but in 2023, we'll see an inflection point where there will be more adoption of uh, 5G private networks. So that was point number three, which is, uh, you know, 2023, we'll see uh, really telcos trying, starting to monetize 5G. And the last point where I see uh, the focus in 2023 is telcos trying to become tech cores. 
Uh, what I mean by that is really becoming digital service providers. So instead of just providing connectivity, providing services uh, like uh, uh, training and staffing to enable their customers to move to the cloud. So we have actual telco uh, partners uh, working uh, on, on programs like this, like Swisscom. We have uh, other partners like SKT, S South Korea Telecom, working on becoming an AI-oriented company and developing services which have a lot of AI technology in them. So this is the fourth pillar, I think, of what I see as a transformational opportunity for telcos in 2023, which is starting to really becoming digital service providers and looking at newer models of uh, services, working with customers, as well as offering the network as a platform. So I'm really hopeful to, you know, looking forward to 2023, where, you know, there will be a big shift in how telcos look at their businesses and cloud will play a big role. Uh, and we are kind of, you know, really in the middle of it, working with all of our uh, telco customers. Some, yeah, some great options to, to reduce the carbon footprint. Now you are talking about trend three, 5G monetization. And we see many telecom service providers that are struggling with this monetization. Can you share what telecom service providers can do to improve this? And what do you expect for 2023? Yeah, so the the whole premise of 5G, uh, 5G was designed very differently than 4G. It's not just about higher bandwidth and higher throughput, but also low latency. It's also about a, a very virtualized network that lends itself to run on the cloud. Uh, it's also that also makes it very agile. Uh, it's easy, uh, re, you know, relatively very easy to build uh, new services on on top of the network. Uh, but to make that happen, you need things like the cloud underneath. And we now have critical mass of five uh, G networks to start looking at that next layer of how you can build new services. Uh, and also, we have uh, a lot of uh, traction with customers now. Uh, in terms of building 5G networks on the cloud so that they, they can take the benefits of cloud, which is automation, the agility to build new services, uh, and so on. Uh, we have DISH that has built the you know, first uh, fully cloud native network in the US. Uh, we have uh, you know, Swisscom, some other companies also, you know, several of our customers now looking at building networks the same way. So once we have that in place, now you can get to the next level of really starting to build new services on top of it in a very agile manner. So we uh, recently uh, announced uh, Mobi, which is a wireless uh, uh, MVNO in Hawaii using Working Group 2's core running on AWS. Now this is an MVNO leveraging T-Mobile's network, but they've built this uh, using on, on AWS. So what that has given them is the ability to just use APIs and dynamically configure the services they offer to their customers. Now, these can, because it's dynamic and it's just done with easy API calls, they can be programmed to individual customers, individual SIMs, uh, depending upon what they need and can be personalized. So this is the really uh, ultimate objective in 5G is to be able to do these things dynamically. And we are seeing evidence of that now. So... Uh, 5G being built, having critical mass of 5G and the devices that go with it. Secondly, starting to use the cloud underneath that gives you the benefits of the cloud in terms of automation agility. And lastly, some actual proof points in uh, wireless carriers, MVNOs, and some operators starting to experiment and really put this into practice. Uh, the model of network as a service uh, is what we are starting to see now. Uh, and this is where I think really the uh, potential of 5G will be realized. So clearly, uh, we are uh, kind of at the start of this journey, but very, very compelling points here to kind of, you know, really take 5G to the next level and start monetizing it. Yeah. Great insights of, of these four key trends. Now, with the help of cloud, with data and AI, telecom service providers can reduce the carbon footprint and also discover new opportunities to monetize 5G. Ishwar, thanks a lot for sharing your latest trends in digital transformation in the telecom industry. And for the audience, thank you for watching, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.